Hello FTC teams, this is Miles from Team CIT 29 Data Force, and in this video we will be discussing the engineering process we followed in our 7 years of competing in FTC. The engineering process is a critical part of designing, building, and programming a robot to compete in FTC. The main idea of using the engineering process during an FTC season is to solve the problems from the current game in an efficient manner. The steps of an engineering process include define the problem, specify requirements, brainstorm ideas, prototype, test and redesign, and approve design. The first step our team takes in the engineering process is to identify the problem. Identifying the problem can include analyzing problems from different challenges and requirements needed to be successful in the game. It is important to analyze different problems or requirements from the game, such as the physical requirements of the robot, size, material, or weight restrictions, conducting point analysis, or more game-specific problems such as possession limit of game elements. One example of identifying the problem is last season, where the Alliance-specific Skybridge limited the robot height to 14 inches, unless the robot were to travel under the neutral bridge. Point analysis should be conducted to see where certain parts of the game, auto, teleop, or endgame, could be worth more or less amount of points. Analyzing problems and identifying requirements is also important for each possible mechanism. And this can be done using SMART requirements, which are requirements that are specific, measurable, attainable, reasonable, and traceable. SMART requirements are used in engineering principles everywhere. Identifying problems or requirements in the game and robots mechanisms can significantly help narrow down different design ideas to accomplish the challenges present in the game. This picture is an example of the breakdown of point percentages in last year's FTC game. This is a good example of breaking down the points to help determine what parts might be more of a challenge than others. The next step of the engineering process is taking what we learned from identifying different problems and requirements to generate design ideas. It is also good to split design ideas into each mechanism to a good variety of different ideas. For each idea that is found, a list of pros and cons is helpful to determine what would work well with that idea and what will not work as well. After determining pros and cons for each idea, it is sometimes good to create 2D hand drawings of each mechanism before creating CAD drawings. 2D hand drawings can be drawn with different orientations, front, top, and side, of each mechanism to get a better idea of how dimensions or how it would fit with other mechanisms. Eventually, 3D CAD drawings can be designed to get a better viewpoint of each mechanism along with the rest of the robot in an assembly. Narrowing down different design ideas will help with focusing on a certain design or mechanisms that could be easier than others. These design ideas can be then prototyped for testing. The picture on the left is a 2D hand drawing of a lift system. This drawing has measurements and is drawn to a certain scale. It is nice to use grid paper to easily define a square as a certain size. The picture on the right is a CAD version of the hand drawing. Prototyping can then be conducted from these ideas to figure out what would meet the challenge the best. Initial prototypes can be made to be a proof of concept for certain ideas the team might be unsure in. These initial prototypes can be made from sheet materials, such as cardboard or chloroplast, for fast and inexpensive prototyping. If certain design ideas need to be further tested, more robust materials including seed channel, extrusion, or metal slash plastic sheet material can be used to create prototypes similar to what would be used on the competition robot. A testing log should be created for each mechanism to document the changes that are made for different tests. Each testing log entry should include, include the date, test number, motor slash sensor use, materials, gear ratios if applicable, results, 
possible improvements and extra comments. The picture on the left is a capstone prototype. The capstone was an object that would be placed on top of a game element in last year's FTC challenge. This prototype was made of paper, tape, and leftover standoff posts. The picture on the right was a prototype of the gripper foundation. Instead of connecting to a chassis, the gripper prototype was attached to a C-channel frame to easily move around, around the prototype. Both prototypes were an easy proof of concept to determine the size and mechanism itself would work well with the challenge. The prototypes of each mechanism should be tested thoroughly with a variety of testing. A good example of testing with a mechanism is testing a variety of motors on an intake to evaluate the differences in speed of grabbing the game element or to see if more torque may be necessary. If testing is unsuccessful, it is sometimes beneficial to go back to design ideas to see if any other ideas may be better. Once a successful prototype is found from testing it individually, it is good to start combining mechanisms together to test how they interact together. A good example of this is testing an intake with a chassis to test how the intake mechanism may be impacted by the speed of the robot or how the chassis approaches the game element with the intake on board. By conducting substantial amount of testing, it will help to prevent redesign from occurring later in the season. Here's a picture of a lift prototype that was tested last season. This lift was made of rev extrusions and 3D print sliding parts. After testing, it was found the slides are not strong enough when weight is applied away from the lift. This was mainly due to the friction from the 3D print sliding parts. This is where it was determined ball bearing drawer slides would be necessary. After significant amounts of testing of multiple mechanisms together, the robot can be assembled. Over the course of the season, improvements will need to be made to the robot to overcome issues that may have come up at competitions. It is important to gradually improve as the season progresses to have the best robot by the end of the season. A testing log should be created to record how the different mechanisms work together or if the mechanism operate differently. Some mechanisms may need to be completely redesigned. If so, refer back to the design phase and document any changes that have been made. It is also important to thoroughly test for consistency, accuracy, and the correct materials that are being used. As always, document everything and test as this may be important for future tests. Your robot should be able to meet at least the basic requirements that was defined initially. It is always good to make small improvements during the season to exceed the initial design requirements. By exceeding your design requirements, you will have a better chance of having a competitive robot. Thank you for watching this video and we hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please email us at dataforsets at gmail.com or send us a message to any one of our team members on the FTC Discord. Thank you.